Okay, should be recording. Uh, we had something that pop. There's somebody who's gotten a got to how to take that one off. Um, there are two ways to do it. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I have numbers that on shift. Okay, so we have uh, we can do numbers that pop. Uh, no, sorry, numbers that sh uh, shift parentheses, and now we will remove the first element of the array. Exactly, numbers that shift, and um, I don't know you guys feel about shift and unshift, but sometimes those two seem confusing to me. I, I like to think of shift as like, that's what you would say if somebody was like, if you were like packed in a bed together and you had too many people, you would be like, hey, like shift over. And that would like push them out of the bed. You would never say to someone, hey, unshift over. So you keep that in mind if it helps you. All right, Dan, have at it. <laughs> All righty. Um, uh, so on, on line 10, how, how can we alter that? Oh, whoops. So that regardless of the length of the array, we would be adding six to the end of it. Um, I was thinking, uh, like whatever array, like I guess numbers dot length. <laughs> yep, that would do it. Um. All right, all right. I think it'll be number that length minus one. I'll just well, I'll if, just add one is number that length. Yeah, sorry. But line twelve is now the same as line nine. Actually, they're doing the same. They're pushing number six to it, but and yeah, and pushing it to the last place actually. So at the end, they're adding it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that would work. If we made it numbers.length minus one, then it would actually be overriding the last element of the array. So in this instance, we do want it to be numbers.length. Um, all righty. So we've got another array called nested numbers. Does anyone know how we would access uh, the number four in this array? Let's see, I'm going to pick on someone. George, do you know how we do it? Oh, someone's yeah, typing. Um, you would just use like two brackets next to each other. So you do, like, you find the index of whatever that array is. So that would be zero, one, two. It'd be index three. So you'd say like nested numbers and then index three. Mm -hmm. And then next to that, you would want to choose which index of that array you want to choose. So if you want to access the four, it would be at index zero. Cool. Um, let's see. Sarah, do you know how we would access uh, the number seven? Oh, I think you may be muted. Why? <laughs> um, the same way they just be nested into one another, so you just continue down the line like. Uh, Oh no, you wouldn't. So seven is actually inside the next one. So it's three, um, five, and one. Well, it, you, well, I'm talking about the numbers. You're not. <laughs> okay. So zero one. Uh, actually, on the on the first one, when it says, "Oh, I see. Yeah, sorry. It is the. I was misreading it. So the third one." Zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then the, well, they are nested. And if I could count, they would be all together in a line. <laughs> the same way as 17. So do you know what, uh, do you know what numbers I would put in there? Um, so, no. <laughs> Does anybody want to take a shot at it? It'll be four and one. Zero. Three, 
Three, two, and one. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think it would actually be three, three, two, two and one. Somebody else typing? You can type if you want to. <coughs> All right, whoever was typing, I don't know who that was. I'm gonna challenge you next. Let's say that we wanted to add a, another number to that center array, six and seven, using, um, using pop. How would we do that? Or, I'm sorry, not pop, push. I would say um, we want uh, to the most in the six and seven, we want to add something. Yeah, we want to push to that array. So what would that look like? Okay, then we, okay. If Raymond wants to say it, he can. Oh yeah, I, sure. I think you, you just do this. Like you're, you can push whatever number you want inside that array. Yep, that's right, that work. Uh, I'm just going to put a number in there. Sorry about that, Ben. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Uh, Nissa, do you want to? Yeah, awesome. Let's go for a change of pace here. Okay, I have a function I'm declaring. Let's comment these guys out right now. Maybe I'll leave that coming handy again. Got function. Uh, takes a name. What happens? What is line 27 log? What everybody types in the chat. What gets logged out when I run line 27? There's more than one thing. Tell me what both of them are. I've got a Peter and a Peter, Peter. Peter, Peter, oops. That's <laughs> a Peter undefined. It's just Peter. Gabriel says Peter and undefined. Gabriel, can you unmute and tell us why you think Peter and undefined? Yeah, so first it would run the function Peter Peter, it go into name, console log that name, so that's Peter. And then it would try to console log a function, which I don't think it can. I'm just guessing. So I'm going to say it's undefined. Because it's not returning anything. It's like trying to console log a function. Right, part of that was spot on. It's trying, to, it's trying to log a return value that does not exist. This function, greeter, does not have a return value. So it's using the implicit return value, which is undefined. If I pulled this Peter off and just said console.log greeter, I would get, uh, I'd get Peter. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't, right? I, I wouldn't get Peter because I'm no longer invoking it. Uh, Evan has it right. I would just have this function, Peter. I would get basically this function body back. It would go find this variable greeter, realize that it is assigned to this function, and that's what it would log back. But if I am calling greeter with Peter, how can I change this function uh, greeter? What do I need to do to it to make it to make this not no longer log undefined? Gabriel, can you fix it so that it will uh, no longer return undefined? Okay. Perfect. Using the return keyword to give it a specific return value. Awesome. Okay, Zan, take it away. All righty. Um, let's see. Uh, Camilla, can you tell me? When I run the code from line 30 to 40, what is 40 going to log?
it's going to be 10. Um, it, will, it won't be 10, actually. Does anybody else want to take a guess? I would say it prints out five. Yeah, can you explain to me why that happened? Yeah, okay, in the beginning we are assigning a global variable A and a global variable B. Then we are defining a function where we call a local or a variable in function where we set A equals five. Then we set the global variable B equals the local variable A. So we're setting B equals A, which is five in this case. So local is five. And then we are invoking this. So we are writing into B uh, the five, and then we are logging it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Okay. How about, what is this going to log? I've lost the ability to see everyone on the video, so uh, I'll either take it in chat or somebody can unmute. We're talking now about um, logical operators. Not going to log the number five. Uh, wouldn't you have small with that? Yeah. What's that? I think false. It said false here. False. 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 Yes. It's going to log false. This is the flipping operator, right? What about this? That's true. Right. We often use this double bang operator to coerce something to a Boolean so that I actually get the value true when I pass in what is in fact just like a truthy value when I specifically want it to be a Boolean. Okay, what about this? Oh my gosh. What's that going to log out? Nick, the word? I, I, think it's gonna, I think it's going to log the string. Evan says log the string, the, the string true, which is correct. The or operator looks for the very first truthy value that it finds and returns it to the console. Uh, got one more for the challenge question. What about this one? You have to differentiate in the chat if you're talking about the string or the Boolean too. I, I might have missed it here. You can get your answer is below this. The Boolean true and and is the guard operator. It only allows you to see the second value if the first value is true. Okay, I need somebody who is ready to take on the challenge to rewrite this as a ternary operator with a ternary operator. I have one person on my camera and it's Scott, do you know Scott? Or who's, if someone's actually already typing, let's go for them. <laughs> it was me, but Scott should do it. All right, Scott, jump in there. I don't know turning off the top of my head. It's the one thing. <laughs> I mean, if, if I had guidance, I bet I could do it, but. Okay. Um, Just one friend. Uh, let's see if there was somebody who can do it. Uh, what else can I grab here off my screen? Michael Doff, or how familiar are you with ternary operators? I'm not familiar with ternary operators. How about you on? I'm going straight up my Sorry. screen here. Sorry. No. Could I try like to write a framework and see if someone could um, guess what uh, inputs to use given the framework? Yeah, go for it, George. Okay. Um, one sec, sorry. So, whoops. It's going to look like um, 
uh, uh, brain fart here, hold on. So you've got a, a variable and you're checking to see if, well, no, you would have some sort of test here. And if the test is true, it's gonna, it's gonna print whatever is in this true area here. And if it's oh. false, it's gonna print whatever's in that false area there. Yep, exactly. And you can, you can act as if this var result is declared elsewhere. Right. So I guess now I'm asking for someone to come and bail me out and see if they can um, put in some, some stuff. Uh, I don't know what that add. That looks like the solution. So you're right. You structure it just the right way. The first thing you give it is the same test. That's our if block. That's our condition. If it, if it meets that condition, we, it's going to do whatever is on this side. It's going to evaluate that expression. If it's false, it's going to evaluate this expression. Uh, Raymond, ternary operators were covered in, uh, one of the days, one of the earlier days. When we talked about logical operators then. Um, so, can yeah, they're, they're, they're in if else. If else, exactly. Okay, good work, guys. I'm going to pass it off to Zan to bring us in for the, the home stretch. Maybe he could get into objects. I haven't got, we haven't got that far yet. Yeah, I will grab, I will do some objects. Um, all right, so we'll start off simple. What um, we create a user object. What is the user object going to look like? It's, uh, we'll console log it out in line 78. What is line 78 going to log? And you can either type it in the code share or you can type it in chat. Cool, that is right. I'm gonna space it out a little bit just for formatting. Um, right, so now we're gonna add some more to our user object. What's gonna happen when I run lines 78 and 79 and then I console log out on line 82? Um, See if there's anyone that has not gone yet. There, I'm gonna throw in chat if uh, if you haven't taken a shot at anything yet. Alrighty, I don't see anyone. Um, let's see, Nick, can you can you? Uh, Alter 83 to 87 to show me what's going to log out. Yeah. So it should just add to location. Cool. Um, Vivian. What's going to happen when I run lines 81 and 82? Uh, what's going to happen to our object? Um, I think it's just going to uh, print rack since it's going to overwrite the original value of this variable secret. Um, 
so the value is correct. Does anybody want to take a shot at what the key will be? Yeah, it's going to be favorite pet because you're setting the variable secret to favorite pet. And then on line 82, when you're doing user in the brackets, it's going to call the variable, actually, and add that as a key. Correct. Um, And then you don't have to write all this out. Uh, but will someone tell me what's going to happen on line 89? Uh, so that's going to just console log user. Yeah, that's right. It's going to console log the whole object. Um, cool. So that's the end of that. And I think that we are just about at the end of our time today. Are there any uh, questions before we go? All righty. Uh, Nissa, are there any announcements that we need to make before the weekend? Oh, uh, there's not. Enjoy your weekend. Cool. It's something you want to do. I'm going to do on Monday for a hackathon. Um, one thing. Yeah, uh, uh, does the time change because actually is on Sunday a time changing? So at least for me, because from Europe. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna, here. We're gonna unless you're in Arizona, I guess we're gonna spring forward. So what would have been nine o'clock will now be happening at what eight o'clock, right? Yeah, for me it's one hour earlier. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So everybody else spring forward on. On, I think it's actually yeah Saturday night, early Sunday morning, but um, we'll still meet at like it'll say nine o'clock, but it'll actually be eight o'clock. Okay. All right. Thanks for the reminder. I'm gonna set up yeah. for myself. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not here, hopefully they remember. All right, you guys. Uh, have a great week. Great work, just and um, yeah, we'll see you guys on Monday morning.